One, two, one, two, one, two. How are we doing? Trips. This is the Hidden Potential, episode number two. The date is Wednesday the 19th of February. And the time is approximately half past twelve. So first, I just want to say a big thank you to all the support and all the love that I got for episode number one. I really appreciate it. I would also like to point out that this is the second time I've decided to record this episode because the first time I forgot to hit play, uh, record on the camera and I really wanted to get this on YouTube as well. So, here we are again, back in the mix, 2K6. That was not funny. So, today what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little Q&A. So, I've had some questions that were sent in over Instagram. Now I'm going to sit here, I'm going to answer a couple of them. Hopefully this goes well because I'm currently waiting on DFS coming to fix something that's wrong with my couch or look at my couch or take something away. Uh, I'm not too sure. I should maybe pay attention to my wife when she speaks to me. Um, So if you're listening or watching Steph, which I know you will be, sorry, I love you. Please forgive me. But I'm here and I, I promise I won't miss it. So let's get started. Now, uh, I'm not too sure how long this will take. Last time I thought it was only on for a, f- uh, for a few minutes and it was 12 minutes, so we'll just see how it goes. Now, first question. Did you find consistency uh, difficult in the early stages? So I'm guessing, did I find it uh, difficult to be consistent when I first started my my, my journey? Um, and I would say yes and no. So it at first, yes, it was very, very difficult. Um, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have, ugh, I didn't have anything in place. I basically just decided to try, try this, try that, and hope for the best. Uh, didn't have a workout plan or anything like that. Just went to the gym, just hoped for the best. And as you know, it's not the way to do it. It's the worst way to do it because how can you be consistent if you've got nothing to track? So the turning point for me for consistency was writing stuff down. So as soon as I started to write stuff down. Uh, it's like it all, all, like all of a sudden became real and uh, I had to do it so because it was on paper I was telling myself I was doing this and that was it so the key for staying consistent for me in the other stages was coming up with a plan for your nutrition coming up with a plan for your workouts and coming up for, with a plan um, for your everyday life um, it's very difficult to stay consistent in the early stages but if you stick with it um, you these habit you'll create these new habits and these old habits that you've took. I don't know. Just say it takes you five years. Just say you, the last time you remember being fit and healthy was five years ago. So it's literally taken you five years to get to this point. It's five years of bad habits, five years of a neg- not negativity, but five years of whatever to get you to here. So it's not going to take two weeks to reverse those five years. You know what I mean? So come up with a plan. Write everything down. Um, it's also almost like a regiment so you have to stick to it almost if it's written there so that's question number one I hope that answered it what was your turning point uh, to make you lose weight um, I was spoke about this in the last video but I'll just speak about it again now so the turning point for me uh, to lose weight was seeing my wedding photos seeing my wedding videos uh, I was really disgusted and I know that sounds bad but I was like I was really disgusted like I felt strong I felt healthy I've always been pretty flexible 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 um so I always felt like I was trapped in like somebody else's body which was it's a weird thing to say um but I just felt like the way I felt just didn't it's, it's not how I should have looked for the way I felt um so that was a turning point for me when I seen the, when I seen the photos and I seen the videos I just I just had to I had to drop everything. I just I knew I had to dedicate my like my life, like everything. I had to drop all my no no drop all my hobbies, but everything I knew it was bad for me. Like playing too many video games, play, eating shit. Like with me and my wife would watch her, and this isn't Steph's fault by the way. Um, but me and my wife we would watch a movie, um, and I would always be like, right, let's get let's get the munchies, let's go. I'd get a bag of crisps, she would get a bag of crisps. I would get a bar of chocolate, she would get a bar of chocolate. We get one of each. Now. I don't know if you've seen my wife, if you've not, check her out, she's hot as fuck, uh, but she's super slim, slim. like she's she's always been fit, fit and healthy, she'll, she'll disagree, but she would never finish her stuff, so whatever she left, I would eat, so I would eat my own stuff, and then I would eat whatever she left as well, so that was the downfall for me there, um, 
So you have to get rid of all these habits, create new habits, uh, like I said previously. Um, <clears throat> but the tab was a turning point for me. Was uh, seeing was basically seeing my photos and my videos and stuff. Did I find it financially difficult to leave joinery and start a new career? Um, no, I didn't. Not one bit. Um, I've always been pretty good with with money. Uh, I, I I like to buy things here and there, but I'm never one for like splashing every single bit of cash I've got. I'm a firm believer in saving as much as you can. Um, and if you've got money in savings, treat yourself. But what I was doing before I quit joining it completely is uh, I was doing as many jobs as I could. I packed as much in my week as I possibly could and I would save 90% of that money. Uh, I opened a savings account, put it in. Um, if my college lecturers or tutors are listening to this, which I, I doubt, but if they are, they'll remember. In my first like six months of college, I was in and out of the classroom answering phone calls, booking in jobs, small jobs here and there around class. On my breaks, I was either at the gym, at jiu-jitsu or doing joinery. Um, so I managed to save up a, a fair bit of money. Um, and I think I didn't have to, if I'm totally honest with you, I think I didn't have to work again for nine months. So I managed to save up enough money and live off. Well, not, and not just like scrimp and scrape, like I had money com- I had money there that we could just live comfortably. So, and another thing as well, I had that little pot of savings, but because I decided to go to Edinburgh College and do it through the government, like my HNC, my HND and my PT level three, and by the way, if you're thinking about becoming a PT, I highly recommend going to Edinburgh College. Not only um, do you get hands-on experience, um, you get paid for it as well. So you get your bursary. So you've got that little bit of like little bit of leeway, little little bit of giveaway. So I had my my pot of money, and then I had my bursary coming in every month as well. Um, so that helped too. Plus, if you want to be a PT and you're doing a HNC in fitness and health, your level three is actually far cheaper than what would be from another company so I, off the top of my head I think you're talking like 1300 or maybe like between 1300 and 2000 pound for a level 2 and 3 whereas for if you do it through Edinburgh College you get your level 3 for it was like 700 pound like 680 pound so it's it's, it's well worth it um, but the answer <laughs> the answer to that is no I went like everything else I went in I went into this with a plan uh, and it worked How to deal with feeling embarrassed about my size and how to get myself in the gym? Um, this is a very good question. I had to actually deal with this myself. So I don't know if, how far back you've followed me or or, or if, how much you've been listening to me recently. But if you can see from a, from last year, I posted quite a lot about training from my mum's spare room, my, my gym that was in my mum's spare room. Um, I... I couldn't go to the gym. Like it was just something I couldn't do. I couldn't face having people looking at me. I couldn't face the thought of people laughing because I was exhausted from three minutes on the, the cross trainer or three minutes on the treadmill just warming up. Uh, I couldn't hack that. So I I, I got weights. Uh, I got a squat rack. I got a bench. I got about two hundred kilos of Olympic weights, two Olympic bars, uh, and I put it in my old bedroom in my mum's house. That was my that was my um, answer to that. But I'm going to be honest, in the gym, nobody's there to judge you, like, nobody, like, I used to think people were going to stare at me all the time, but that's not the case, like, that doesn't happen, and if it does happen, then fuck them, the people who want to stare at you and judge you, they can fuck off, like, who the fuck are they to stare at you and judge you, they're in the gym to try and better themselves, just like you're in the gym to try and better yourself, so if somebody wants to look at you and stare at you and laugh, fuck them, don't worry about it. You, you, you be you be the bigger person. You you get your heat done. You concentrate on yourself and you build yourself back up. Fuck everybody else. That's what I've got to say about that. Sorry, I got a wee bit riled up there because it used to it used to really get to me. But um, sorry, failing that. If you if you're local and you want to come into the gym and you're embarrassed, shoot me a message. Um, you can come into the gym. I'll walk around with you. I'll show you a few few bits of equipment. Um, basically, just like. So you've got somebody there with you. So you're not on your own for the first time going to the gym. So if, if that's the case, give me a wee message and uh, we can get sorted. Do I miss being on the tools? So do I miss being a joiner? Uh, absolutely fucking not. 100% don't. But I do miss the feeling of creating something out of nothing. Uh, don't miss the weather. Don't miss the shitty jobs. Although I did work on some really, really nice jobs. Um... But that's the only one, the only aspect I miss the joinery is creating something out of nothing. But 
I have that now with, with PT. As a joiner, you would you would have these rough materials and you would make it into something beautiful. Oh, that was really nice. As a PT, you're working with these people who are, oh, somehow I've just hit 10,000 steps sitting on my bum, so, woo. You've got these people who are at a, at a ground level who who are rough materials, so to speak, who are, who are, who are trying to build themselves, build themselves into something. Now, I've got the, the, the pleasure to work with these people all through these stages, building them up, let, making them reach reach their goals, giving them the tools they need to get to where they want to be. So, um, no, 100% do not miss fucking joinery. And shout out to all my peeps out there who I've worked with in the past. I do miss you guys. Some of you's. Did you start with a PT? How about if I'm skint? I have no idea where to start. Okay, so... I didn't start with a PT. Like I said, I started and I trained for years. Like I've trained for like ten years, um, like on and off, like not consistent. So I was pretty confident. I knew how to squat. I knew how to bench and deadlift. Um, although you're you're never really competent. All right, I'm going on a tangent. Yeah, uh, no, I n- I didn't have a PT. But if you're skint, uh, online PT might be a good option for you. Although if a lot of people go to a PT because they want, need that accountability. They need that push in the gym. But online PT, you don't get that. You get your macros, you get your um, workouts, you get co- consistent uh, feedback from your your PT. Um, but you don't have that one person there beside you pushing you on every single workout. Uh, another option you've got is you, obviously you've got all this free content on YouTube. You can try and teach yourself. Um, although I would say you need to be very careful because I've seen a lot of people hurt themselves in the gym. Um, another option, uh, the gym group cabinet tool, uh, there's loads of PTs there, uh, I'm sure one of them would be able to offer you a free taster session, um, or even just come in and, like again, like the last one, if you need some exercises or you need a wee push forward in the right direction, shoot me a message, I'm more than happy to help you, you can come into the gym, we'll do one session, um, I'll show you anything you want. Uh, if you want to learn how to squat bench deadlift, if you want to learn how to hit your delts, you want to learn how to increase your, uh, the size of your fucking glutes, just let me know uh, and I'll be able to help you. And again, if not, I'm sure one of the other many PTs will. Talk about the way people treated you after you weight loss. So, right, so talk about the way people treated you after you lost weight, pretty much. So, um, to be honest, nothing really changed. I've always been the same, like, I wouldn't say I'm confident, but I've always been the same, like, bubbly person. I speak to everybody. Um, nothing's really changed. I mean, I've had a bit more exposure because of it, obviously. My business my business took off, like, off in the ground, like, pretty fast because of that. Um, I think the only thing that's really changed is a lot of people would maybe look up look up to me in a way because I've, like, been on that journey. I've been on, I've been, um, I've been in the trenches. I know what it takes. I know what you need to do to get from A to B. Um, but in terms of being treated differently, uh, nothing, not, not really. No. Uh, no. I'm struggling to find motivation to lose weight. Any tips? Right, okay. So the first thing I'll say is you just have to fucking do it. There's no tips that I can give you that are going to make you lose weight. You have to Come up with a plan, you need to tell yourself, right, or like set yourself some goals. So, right, I want to um, I want to drop four dress sizes. I want to drop four dress sizes in 10 months. There's your goals. There's your main goals. Now you go, you reverse engineer it, you bring it back. You have goals every, every four weeks, so small achievable goals that you can hit because this one end goal is quite far in the distance. Um, now, if you just focus on that goal, it's forever going to be very far away very difficult to achieve, very difficult to get to. So set small goals in between, little little checkpoints where you can reach it, boost your confidence, know that you've done it, know that you've progressed, set another one, set another one, set another one. You need to assess your diet, you need to look at what you're currently eating. Um, and now a lot of people will think, this is, isn't it bad, that's not bad. Like just say you have, I don't know, like a big bully salad, with some grilled chicken or whatever, and then you get a big dollop in. Now, don't get me wrong, you can add sauces and you can add stuff to your, your foods and things, right? But you just need to be aware of what you're doing. Now, people, like I said, people get this, and then they'll add a massive amount of like full fat mayonnaise or whatever. 
just say that that one meal is like 500 calories. I've seen people like put a shitload of mayonnaise on stuff. So that in itself could be about 500 calories of mayonnaise. So that's a 1,000 1, calorie meal right there. So you have to you have to be aware of what you're ingesting. You have to be aware of your n- nutrition. Um, so top tips, you just have to do it. You have to, you have to gap, you have to move, you have to do it. Assess your nutrition. And another thing is the gym isn't the answer. Now, a lot of people like the gym. A lot of people don't like the gym. Some people like to walk. Some people like to run. Some people like to play fucking tennis. Whatever. The key to losing weight is eating a wee bit less and moving more. So find a movement or find find a way of expending energy that you like. Um, there's no point in doing something you, you, you don't like. Or you, it's not going to be consistent. If, if it's not enjoyable, it's not consistent. So there's my tips for you. Assess your nutrition. Find exercise that you enjoy. And also make... Make your life as easy as possible. Now, if you do end up going to the gym, make sure it's a gym that's as close to you as possible. If you do end up joining a, a sporting facility, make sure it's as close to you as possible. Because I remember some days I was like, oh, I really can't be fucking bothered going to the gym. And I, that was when I, where was it? It was when I was training at a gym uptown and I stayed in I stayed in Nidre. So it was like a 40, 35, 40 minute journey. I couldn't be fucked with that. Like, I couldn't be arsed with that. As soon as I changed, as soon as I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which was literally a 5-10 minute walk, game changed, it was done. I had no excuse, I knew it was only two minutes away. As soon as I got in the house, had some food quickly, got changed, got my bag, boom, it was at the door. Make your life as easy as possible. That's probably the main bit of advice I can give you. Oh, damn, Daniel, I think that's it. Yeah, cool, so, that's the questions done. Again, uh, I hope this was helpful. Um, I didn't really come into these with a plan. Well, I've only done one. I didn't come into these with a plan. I just like to talk. I want to make it as real as possible. Um, obviously, I'm going to plan stuff out and have checkpoints or whatever, but the things like this and the previous, I just wanted to speak. I want you to realise that this isn't bullshit. Like, I'm just talking here. Like, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I'm speaking to the, the mic and the camera just exactly how I would speak to your everyday person in the gym, outside the gym or whatever. I'm trying to connect with you as much as I can here. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really enjoying doing these, by the way. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it as consistent as possible, either every week or every second week. If you've got any questions, please send them in uh, Instagram at hidden potential underscore. Oh shit! No, scrap that. Scrap that. Abort. Abort. Hidden underscore potential underscore PT, or you can get me on my website, um, or you can get me on Facebook under David Steele PT. But thank fuck, we recorded this time. This was a good episode, I think. I've not listened to it, obviously. But again, guys, thank you very much for the support. If you have any questions, like I said, send them in. I'll answer every single one of them. Right, troops, thank you again. Have a good one.